If you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know that OBS is a super flexible and powerful tool that you can do a whole bunch of different things with. You can live stream with it. You can record gameplay and upload Let's Plays to YouTube. You can do walkthroughs on how to use certain programs or websites like I do on a regular basis. You can even record just multiple camera angles at once within one piece of software and do a guide on how to assemble a Lego set if you wanted. What's up everybody, Dimitri of Chaotic Gaming here and today I'm gonna show you how to do a talk over recording using OBS, whether you're gonna be using it for gameplay, for software, for anything really. We're gonna to try to go through it as general as possible and you can spiff it up and change it up and do whatever you'd like to make it however you need it to be. If you want a more in-depth guide on how to set up OBS itself, I do have a relatively longer video on OBS setup. If you guys would like me to do a more brief version, please let me know in the comment section below on what you would like me to focus on and uh, I'll try to record a new one, updated one. OBS has changed a little bit since, so it might be a good idea to do so. So once you've got OBS installed and ready to go, go ahead and go to your settings. We're gonna go through a few quick brief things here. Um, stream is not gonna be important. Output is gonna be important. We're gonna change this to advanced and we're not gonna have to worry about the streaming page. If you do wanna use some of these things for stream, you can go ahead and do so. But uh, the streaming stuff is not gonna be important for what we're focusing on today. We're gonna go to the recording tab. So the important thing about the recording tab is choosing where your videos are going to go by using the recording path, choosing your format. I do recommend using MKV because if OBS crashes midway through a recording, it will not corrupt the file, which is super important. It also allows you to separate all the audio tracks and post if you decide you want to. Um, selecting your audio tracks. If you want to have those separate audio tracks, you're going to want to use this. If not, just keep it at the default of one and your encoder. So your encoder is going to be entirely dependent on what you're recording and what your hardware is. If you're just recording your desktop, um, you know, a piece of software, a website, stuff like that, you can just go ahead and use X264, which is using your CPU. And that is just the most simple, easy way to do it and you can set that up and depending on your cpu you can set it to have much higher quality presets um, you can set it to go you know slow very slow all depends on your hardware um, you can just keep it at the default though uh, very fast if you want you're most likely going to be recording at 1080 so having like a super high quality preset isn't the biggest deal especially if you're just doing a like a guide on stuff you don't need the highest quality you don't need that crazy um preset be done but if you do have a newer nvidia gpu and it has an nvenc encoder i'll leave a link in the description for nvidia's webpage that tells you which ones have the new encoder and which ones don't but if it has a specific NVIDIA nvenc chip on it for the encoder you can go ahead and use the nvenc encoder and that will take all load off your CPU and put it on the specific NVENC encoder on the GPU. This will have the best performance if you're recording gameplay because it's not gonna be taking resources away from your CPU. It's not gonna be taking resources away from the gaming portion of your GPU, the, the cores and everything that you use to play your games. So this will have the best performance if you're recording gameplay. So keep that in mind, but you have to have a GPU that supports it. Now, next up is your bitrate. If you're streaming to Twitch, your bitrate is probably 2,500 to 5,000. But if you're recording, you don't have that limitation anymore. So we can go ahead and set that all the way up to what I use when I record is 40,000. Now, you don't have to go that crazy. You can set it up to whatever you want. The higher the bitrate, the higher quality the recording is going to be. It's just going to keep that fidelity. And I have so much hard drive space that the 40,000 bitrate isn't really killing me all too much. I got lots of hard drives. So that's the way I like to do it, but you can set this up at whatever bit rate you would like. You can keep it at the 5,000 max that you would use for Twitch. Again, it all depends on what kind of stuff you're recording and 
how much hard drive space you have to spare when doing your recordings. Now, if you've watched any of my other OBS videos, you'll know that I like to do my OBS sound settings based on a scene by scene basis. All my audio sources are all on a scene by scene basis, so I always disable the global. If you don't want to do that, you can go ahead and leave it at the default. Um, but I will show you how I have my audio set up even when I do my recordings like this. And then your video, I would just keep your base canvas, whatever resolution your computer is, and you don't have to rescale your output anymore. So you can have that at the same resolution as your base canvas. And then I would put this to 60, just because it keeps it nice and clean, nice and smooth. And again, you're not worrying about the bitrate limitations from streaming to Twitch. So you can have this basically maxed out. So say we want to record just our entire display and we're gonna do a quick walkthrough on how to set up a certain program, for example. So we're gonna go to our scene, we're gonna go to source and we're going to do display capture. Let's call it just display one. And there we go. So you'll see here that my display is 1440p but I'm recording in OBS at 1080. So we're gonna down, we're gonna change this down. You could go ahead and, you know, drag it and make it smaller, but an easy way to do that is to transform and then fit the screen. So very easy. Now, as I mentioned, I do my audio separately. So if you wanna add my microphone in, we're gonna go right click, add audio input. We're gonna call this microphone. And we'll go ahead and choose my microphone. So now you'll see here my microphone's talking into OBS. And this is the most simple way to do it. No webcam, just the screen and me talking and guiding you through. Now, if you want to do something else, like if you wanted to record a gameplay, I would suggest you don't use game uh, display capture. You go ahead and do game capture. So let's go ahead, add a game. I launched a game already. I am blind, there we go. We'll call this one PoE, because it's for Path of Exile. Specific window, Path of Exile. I think we may have to open the game up again. Yeah. You can do the same thing if you're, again, if your monitor is large. And now we have our game here. This game, it doesn't keep the game actually like rendering anything if I'm all tabbed. So it just looks like an image right now, but this would be the way that you would do a game. If you want to do an application, it would be something very similar. You would go to <clears throat> window capture. You would choose your application. Um, if you're going to be doing things like Chrome and showing someone how to do something on a website, or you're gonna show someone how to do something on a piece of recording software. Instead of doing window capture, I would just suggest you do display capture. The reason you don't wanna do display capture while you're playing a game though, is that it is a pretty resource heavy type of capture. So it'll take away from your game performance. So that's why you would usually wanna use game capture for that. So say you wanna go ahead and add your webcam so you're gonna do something like what I'm doing right now with this recording showing your face and talking over. Now, I don't have a webcam plugged into my gaming PC, but I do have my phone set up as a webcam using NDI, which I do show in another video. So let's go ahead and show that here. So we're gonna go to NDI source. We're gonna call this phone. And there we go. So you can see I have my webcam. You can place that anywhere on your screen. Now, if you wanna go ahead and put a border on that, just go ahead, go to add image. Go ahead and find your border image. So we just find a really simple one that I have laying around in my folders here. We're gonna go and drag that on top of our webcam. It's a little difficult to see with the display, so we're gonna hide that real quick. We're gonna put our webcam in there. We're gonna size it to fit. And then what I suggest after you size your webcam to fit the border, is you group them. So you hold control, you click both of them, group the selected objects. We're gonna call this webcam. And now if I select the webcam group, I can move them both at the same time. So if you have to move things around, it makes it a lot easier. You're not 
constantly moving the webcam and then moving the border and trying to make sure that they line up properly. So you can resize them, you can do whatever you like with that. Turn back on this, and now we've got our webcam, we've got whatever we're capturing, we've got our voice, we've got everything we need to do any kind of talk over recording. Now, I do mention this in one of my other videos, but you can have some flexibility with how you have your webcam and your border. So let's go ahead and remove, ungroup, ungroup please. Uh, we're gonna delete that webcam border and we're gonna add a border that is not 16 by nine, not the same as our webcam. So here's an example of a four by three webcam border. And if we go ahead and have that, we'll just hide our display again. And you know, the webcam and the border don't match. So I do show this in another video, but an easy way to get it to line up is frame it however you want it to be framed, right? So let's do the center. And then if you hold alt and you pull in from the sides, you can easily very quickly crop something. So then again, we go ahead and click those two. We group that up, cam, and we're done. Now we can move that around. We can put it somewhere. And you can have everything set up. The reason I mention this is a lot of people are getting into the portrait style webcams. Um, when doing talkovers. So let's get rid of this entirely and crop that down. So a lot of people are doing webcams in this style where it's in a portrait mode so that you're seeing more of the width of the screen um, and you're losing a little bit more of the height. But some people really enjoy how that looks and you know, you get a lot of flexibility here. If you watch any of my videos about plugins or about just different things you can use OBS for. You can get a little bit more fancy, you can do more things, you can do what I have here. So I have like a rotating widget that I'm using based off of an overlay that I have set up. Um, you can get really flexible, you can put images, you can put video files in here, you can do all kinds of things. Depending on what you're recording, you kind of get that flexibility and you have that power to do whatever you like. You can use NDI and you can do cool things like using your phone as another camera. Um, you can have multiple camera angles all looking at this at a singular thing. So if you're building a Lego set, you know, you got a top down camera, you got a side camera, you got a front camera, you can do a whole bunch of things. You get a lot of flexibility here. One final thing, if you are recording in MKV, and then you're gonna import into a video editing software that it does not support MKV, you're gonna to have to go and remux your files. So to do that, you go up to file, you go to remux, you go and you find your MKV recording, and then you would click remux. I've already remuxed that one, but when it's done, it'll put an MP4 file right beside the MKV file, and then you can go ahead and import that into whatever video recording software you're gonna be using. And that's it. It's super simple. OBS is a very flexible but powerful tool. Like I mentioned, you can use it for streaming. You can use it for just recording. You can use it for setting up a virtual webcam if you want. It's got all these options and you can combine different tools that you would use for all those different things together and you can create some really awesome content. So whether you're looking to help a friend set up a program, you're looking to record YouTube videos like I do, or you're just looking to, you know, do Let's Plays and upload those to YouTube if you want. OBS can do it all, and it's super simple to set up. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed. As I've mentioned, we're getting really close to that thousand subscriber mark, and I'm hoping to do something special. So thank you for everyone who watches and subscribes to my channel. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about today's video, or future videos, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. If you wanna have a little bit more of a conversation, you can go ahead and join our Discord. I'll leave a link in the section below for that. And we can have a little bit more of a back and forth. I do have a help desk channel set up specifically for helping people out. So you're more than welcome to post there whenever you'd like. As always, I stream on Twitch from Friday until Tuesday. Come check me out and say hello. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask me there and I will try to answer you in between getting destroyed in whatever video game I'm playing with my friends. Thanks again for watching to the end of the video. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you next Friday.